Welcome to another installment of the Mastercam Studio at Prototech. This exclusive video series features the exceptional functionality found only within Mastercam, the number one most widely used cam software in the world. Here's the topic of today's video. Today we're going to take a look at a multi-axis toolpath called Swarf Milling. Let's go ahead to my screen and take a look at where this will apply. So on my screen here, I have kind of a complex part and we're gonna focus in on these green surfaces first. Now, what these are, are these are flat walls. So there is no curvature to that. And that's gonna be important for this tool path since this will only be for flat walls. So up in my tool pass menu, if I come up to my multi-axis group, there's a one called Swarf Milling. I'm gonna go ahead and left click on Swarf Milling. Now in this case here, uh, this will be Mastercam 2024, so you're going to notice some differences here, and this will just be kind of a tech preview for you if you haven't seen 2024 yet coming out in a couple weeks. So I'm going to use a half inch flat end mill, and I'm going to go to my cut pattern page. The cut pattern page is where a lot of the guts are in this tool path. So I can simply go to my swarf geometries here, and I can hit the white arrow, and I can go pick my, uh, my uh, faces that I want to swarf against. And in this case here, I'm gonna go ahead and hold down shift and left click. You'll notice that shift click picks all tangent faces. That's a great pick for a Swarf toolpath and I hope you can utilize that. I'm gonna go ahead and end selection and I'm going to get rid of these extensions. We'll come back and take a look at these extensions in a little bit. Uh, tool axis control, there's really nothing to set here. Uh, you have five axis, fourth axis or three axis. Definitely in this case, we want five axis output. Linking, so the linking, if you want to lead in and lead out of this cut, which you typically will, or you will be driving that end mill straight down the wall, um, you have to ensure that you have use lead in and use lead out on here. Otherwise you won't get that uh, behavior. So make sure you have them on and you can set them by expanding this and going to your default lead in and lead outs for them values. And we're just gonna check multi-cuts here. So we're gonna talk about depth control with the Swarf toolpath because a lot of people can't find this command and it's sitting in multi-cuts. So right now we're going to set this number to a zero and I'm going to simply green check to see what we get out of this toolpath. And it's going to generate. And it's generating in the background. And, and as always, this is a multi-threading toolpath so you can continue to work on the front end if you please. And we have our tool path out. So let's go ahead and back plot this. And you're gonna notice that I get my nice lead in here. And that's because of that use lead in and use lead out option that I pointed out earlier. And as you can see, I'm gonna get nice multi-axis motion along this part, following the wall as we go and following the corners through and coming back around making this a very efficient tool path. And I'm gonna get great surface finish out of this tool path also because I'm using the side of the tool along that whole feature. Now let's go ahead and look at some other scenarios here. So let's go ahead and uh, let's say that I wanna get my tool below this bottom edge here. So right now I have zero set there. So the tip of my tool is gonna to be to the bottom. Maybe I don't get full cleanup on the bottom. Maybe I wanna drive that past. So if I come back into the parameters here, remember it's sitting in multi-cuts and it is this value here. So tool shift. So let's say I wanna go negative 250 thousandths. I type in a negative 250. If I wanted to go above that bottom edge, I could just put a positive number in there it'd work the same. I'm going to go ahead and green check. This is going to regenerate again, and then we'll see the difference with them depth cuts and how we can control that, just so you know going forward. And I'm going to go ahead and back plot this, and we'll take a look at a little bit of this. But as you notice here, my tool, it's kind of hard to get around there, but as you're looking in there, I'm a quarter inch below that lower edge. So that's kind of just what I wanted to point out there, and that'll follow that all the way around. So depth cuts are very important. That's how you can control that cut. Now let's go ahead and take a look at another uh, situation here. So let's go to this other side here. This other side has a floor. So it's gonna be the exact same picks, but now I'm gonna add a floor surface in there so I don't gouge that floor. So I'm gonna go back up and make another swarf milling tool path. Same everything here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and pick my swarf geometry here. Once again, shift click, we'll pick that automatically. 
gonna end selection. And I'm gonna turn on floor geometries. So floor geometries are any type of situation like this where you get into where you can't gouge that floor. And what MasterCam will do when we pick a floor geometry is it will, it will tip the contact point or the pivot point of that tool along that floor. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick that with the white arrow. And just a simple left click and end selection. Now we have two options in here. Um, you have a floor clearance. So if you wanted to for surely stay off that floor, you could give it a floor clearance and that would keep it off that floor. Or we have drop and retract or retract only. Now the picture here shows very well. So drop and retract, you'll notice that there's a little boss in between here. It'll go, go up and over that and come back down. If I go to retract only, it trims that pass off so it can't do any plunging to them faces. So in this case here, wouldn't matter, but I'm just gonna leave it to drop and retract. Everything stays the same here, same as the linking. Um, all of this will stay the same. In this case here, I'm gonna go back to my multi-cuts for that depth control, and I'm just gonna leave that at zero. Otherwise, I'd be inside that floor potentially there. So let's go ahead and green check. And we're gonna let this regenerate, and we're gonna take a look at that up against a wall. Or I'm sorry, a floor. So here it comes across. And you're noticing that its pivot point is always maintained to that floor surface. So maybe this is kind of giving me maybe a good enough finish along that floor, um, potentially to save me some time um, processing that floor cut. Or if we need to go back, maybe we could give it additional floor geometries that keep it up off that floor and come in with a uh, unified tool path or uh, another uh, option in Mastercam. And then the last one we're gonna look at here is uh, like a split part. So maybe a part that's not fully contained. Now, if I just do a swarf uh, tool path on this red surface here, once again, same picks here. I'm just gonna shift click that. And I'm gonna turn off floor geometries because I don't have them in here. And I'm just gonna make sure I'm running at my depth of zero. If I just green check here, one thing that we may have a potential issue with is we are going to lead in and lead out right on the corner there. So if I go ahead and back plot this, it comes in and it's kind of right at that corner when it leads in. Now maybe I wanna extend this out. So there's a very easy way in this tool path to extend our cuts on a situation like this. If I go back into the parameters and go back to my cut pattern page, now I have an extension link that start and an extension link that end. Maybe I'm gonna put a half inch in each of these and this will extend my cut out to maybe ease into that cut potentially depending on your situation there. Now you can see how they extended out and I'm extended way out here. So it's going to have a better potential transition into that cut. So I definitely hope you can um, take some of these situations I showed you as swarf milling and implement them into your multi-axis tool paths because this is a very easy tool path to use. Um, and for any other information, make sure you contact Prototech Engineering and uh, definitely check out our YouTube channel. And thanks for watching.